Thank you everyone for joining in. Uh, today's topic is about securing services uh, using systemd. So uh, there are multiple different ways of defense, defense in depth in modern uh, Linux systems, but we're going to look into a particular part, uh, systemd. Uh, and I got really excited about it because uh, when I discovered that how systemd made things make like, kind of really, really easy for anyone like were literally kind of new to whole uh, security side of a service. Now, when I say service, it means a service which is uh, under systemd, which is running on the system. This can be something like an internet facing service. This can be some other applications running on the same box. It can be anything. Now, if you are a federal contributor, if you are a packager, if you are a like, maintainer, then I hope from this workshop, you will find some points which you can then use uh, in your own project, or if you're maintaining a package, then you maybe you want to submit a, a PR uh, to RMR to the upstream so that you know we have these features enabled uh, for the packages you're maintaining. And now uh, I'll try to share my screen and then see how it goes. Uh, I'll first, uh, can everyone see this properly? If anyone just say yes, no, uh, that will be helpful. Perfect. So before anything else, uh, the things I'm going to say, you can all find all of these details on your computer in a man page. So whatever I'm going to talk about, you will find everything here. So this whole workshop, if you like, you know, if you don't have time, you don't want to, you want to like go watch some other talk and come back later in maybe the record, or you want to read and find out all of these things, you can find everything here, system D, E, X, C, C. So we're going to learn about uh, various features here. And if you think, or if you know that I'm saying something wrong or something really stupid, it's perfectly okay to say that, that, hey, I said, like, you said something wrong, in this case, me. So, because it's a thing, something like I'm always learning and uh, it's all of us together as community. So it's perfectly okay to tell me that something is wrong and we can fix it or I'll learn it at that moment from you. So for this uh, workshop, I just created a VM. And uh, it's a Fedora 35. I was planning to use a Fedora 36 VM, but uh, I think I don't have the image right now on this uh, place in OpenStack. Uh, we're doing. So, uh, over the years, as I said, like systemd added multiple features, correct, for uh, securing services. And we will look into a few of those, but before anything else, uh, let's talk about a few of the very basic uh, cases which can go wrong. And one of my favorite uh, examples which I found on the internet was about uh, access to the TMP directory, that is temporary directory. Uh, for TMP slash TMP, both cases. Uh, there are times when one single computer, one single system is running more than one service and multiple services are writing on or using slash temp or vertemp. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, they're using it in a wrong way so that like one service is being able to write or one user is being able to write in that uh, temporary directory and modify values, configurations, or changes the behavior of the other service. So uh, anyone doing any basic course on like, you know, those uh, pen testing courses and things, you will find if you go and look any of the uh, currently available pen testing courses, tools, you will find all of those tools, they try to automatically identify like the temporary directories where everyone can write and uh, if any other service is running based on the temporary directory access, etc. So that's where like uh, one of the features of systemd is to provide a private temporary directory. Uh, no, it's Matthew, uh, if you don't mind, uh, like I'm not sure like uh, if anyone else should be able to join the video or not, because 
I'm having my headphone on, but it still feels strange that uh, like there is no one else to talk to or not to listen to anyone else on the other side. Uh, we just started, by the way. So, uh, what do you call it? Coming back, to, oops, this is a different box, this box. So yeah, Fedora 35, and uh, as I was speaking, uh, private temporary uh, directory. So what systemd provides is the way where each and every service can have their own private temporary directories. So those will be mounted automatically by systemd for you. So for each of those services, when the actual service, the application inside that service, it will see that it has a complete separate clean temporary directory and it will feel like there is no other service running on that system. Now, I'll try to copy paste commands if I can remember the commands because of course I'm pretty bad at remembering things. And to make things simpler, I'll become a producer. Uh, I hope this is okay. So, and also one like pretty important thing. Uh, this is something again I learned uh, uh, from one of Leonard's talk about System D. Is that uh, that System D provides this nice utility plus two called system D run using which we can try out these different uh, features of system D services. Uh, we can try this out without even writing a complete service file of our own. And so uh, like I found this is really nice way to learn these features and then we can at the end uh, of the workshop we can write these things down in a proper uh, what do you call service file. So for now, we'll just start with uh, here. Uh, and uh, we'll start with the private PMP. So private PMP equal to yes or true. Uh, so that's uh, first parameter and I think hyphen P, yes hyphen P. So in maybe pass. So now you can see that it's created a dynamic service file based on the configuration I provided. And it also says how to get out of this. So actually I'll get out first and then uh, come back again. Uh, let's see, control B, yeah, log out. I Let's try slash TMP first. We have some directories. Let's try var TMP. We also have cloud in it here. So this is something to, nice to see. Now let's... Uh, uh, yep, because I press control D here. Um, do this. Let's see. Ah. If I remember correctly, this is what happens when you try to do, uh, do live demo. I completely did a wrong command because. Yep. So what happened is that it went into the uh, run new 27.service and it also never stayed back on that. So now I have to see what I did type wrong. Oops. As I said that always making mistakes and now I have to go and see the man page if I actually remember the command. 
I have all things written down, like the things I'm going to talk about, the things I'm going to do, etc. But completely forgot to write down the actual command to verify how this works. So if you don't mind, give me a second. I'll open up a new terminal. Fedora 35 and with uh, systemd run, AC Linux has something to say. So it's the AC Linux which stopped that service. I know why it is not running. So, so for now, okay, let's get back into that demo part. So this is my actual VM. We can see directories in slash DMP and we can see directories in part DMP. We can see the cloud unit. Now I'm saying uh, private temporary uh, directories, yes, and user being passed. So you can see these two failed units were failed thanks to AC Linux. Uh, but uh, we are now in a different uh, environment. So if now I do slash TMP, it's empty. If I do slash what TMP, it's empty. So any service, even if you can see that I'm still root in this. I'm still root, but I'm still this process, this user bin bash still cannot find anything on the temporary directories. So if you have three different services running in this box, and one of the service is uh, vulnerable to an attack via its temporary directories, maybe it's reading user input, or maybe it's reading, reloading automatically from some configuration file. So that issue is gone at this moment because uh, the services maybe which is facing internet right now is having private TMP, yes or true, so that, you know, a private TMP on, I think, the other level, so that uh, the service will have its own private temporary directories. It cannot talk to or see anything else happening on the actual temporary directory of the host. I hope this is, uh, and if anyone, again, if anyone of you please try it out, uh, feel free to try it out. It's always nice in a workshop if somebody tries out the same features because, as you know. I have a question about private temp while I'm here. Uh, right. this, happened, this, is, this is a coincidence, but someone was just telling me that uh, private temp actually has some consequences beyond slash TMP that it um, causes some other things to be namespaced separately as well. Is that true? Hey, do you know the details? If you don't, I didn't mean to be a gotcha no, question. I no, perfect. See, this is, I don't, uh, first of all, the answer. I know that I checked that var temp, uh, temp, those are the two directories which were namespaced into uh, separately. But I really would love to hear these questions and this discussion, Matthew. Because it's about learning together, right? Like, I'm also learning all the time. So I just remembered that now. It was something I was going to check later. And I thought, wait a minute, maybe this is the, the easiest way to check. Continue. Yeah. No, so that's uh, private TMP for all of us. I will just get out of this. And now let's say something else. If a process is running uh, with access to the home directories, it can try to still, you know, if somebody can uh, reach uh, other people, other users home directories or if it is root or something similar, it can like, you know, try and maybe an RC or uh, like file, random file access. So it can try to read any other users home directories. So just like private TMP, uh, yes, we can also say to protect the home directories. So this will take care of the home directories. In the same, just like the private TMP, it will create temporary uh, file systems using TMPFS, and then it will mount. And when we say protect home, it will protect uh, the slash home, uh, slash root, and I think uh, run user. So just before that, uh, you can see in my host, it is slash ls slash home, there is a Fedora user, default uh, cloud account. And then uh, maybe I will type uh, Ext defines in my root directory, and I hope that uh, um, 
a lot of things under slash run. Uh, some of them will be at the level. So slash run, yeah. And this is uh, 1000 is our Fedora user. So stability run. So instead of private TMP, we'll do to tech. Boom. User being best. Okay, let's try. The first thing to notice is that from our this prompt, we moved into a completely different prompt because it's a uh, no, it's uh, okay. There's a question mounting new file system. Sage root, uh, you can think like this that it's created a temporary directory, then namespaced it completely. So, yes, kind of sage root, but not only sage root. And it's taking care of creating those and uh, deleting those or bringing them back as required. Uh, system B will take care of everything. You, as a like person who is starting on stopping the service, you don't have to worry anything or even like you know how to mount them properly or not. So, um, there you can see the home is not safe and still root. If I do slash home, it's not there. Slash, let's try one sorry, user. Nothing. The 1000, the federal user, it's not there. Any questions about home directories? No questions. So, right, we to the home. But uh, we still have access to various other parts of the Linux system. Let's say slash block. A lot of things running on this box. Uh, a lot of processes and details we can read because I'm still uh, root. So, just to protect the proc file system, systemd provides something called protect proc. We will try this out, not right now, mainly because to protect the proc, you have to make sure that the service is running as a different user than boot. So, protect proc equal to the values, that will not help you until you get into a different, like you run your service as a different user altogether not as a uh, call, root user in this case. Uh, any questions? Could this procedure take away root's power to create start, create delete, uh, create or delete files and start a, or start stop services? Yes and no. Uh, yes and no because it can stop, take away a lot of root's power. At the same time, it will still have access to some parts of of the system and things, um, including like uh, what is the value? I think it's called protect uh, kernel modules. Yes. So if we instead of this, if we do protect kernel modules equal to yes. So this value will make sure that even if you are root, you will not be able to load or unload any kernel modules. And can we combine multiple options? Yes, that's what we have to do, actually. So for our demo, uh, I'll show you something else. I'm going to get into those details in a few minutes. Uh, and then there, we, we will actually make sure that uh, we will write or use a real service, which is extremely vulnerable. And then we'll try to see how can we protect the system, even though we are running a really, really bad web application. Now, uh, two different ways of doing that. Now, here the workshop can go into two different ways. One is I can keep showing you one by one separate uh, of these features uh, in the command line, or we can try out a new complete service altogether, where like we'll first start the service with the, all the vulnerability, and then go ahead and try to fix parts of it one by one and i will tell you some stories the things i learned while doing this 
So if you have any preference between these two different parts, uh, you can tell. Uh, meanwhile, I'll go and try to see another uh, options uh, system D. Uh, to get out of this and then someone asked if you can put multiple options yes you put multiple slash p uh, hyphen p if not slash hyphen p in this case and in a service file you can just write them down one by one so in our another example we can use is a temporary file system using this we can actually say that hey these uh, like particular directories we want to mount, but we want to mount as temporary file systems. And we can even say these are read only. So let's say an example would be slash var, and I want it to be read only. Again, uh, we are here because uh, and uh, cd no home is not set. ls uh, cd slash var and ls. Because we say for this particular service, we want to make sure that the var is a temporary directory and read only. It's created like that. And as, oh, that's a new poll. Sorry, suddenly it was log buzz. Uh, even though I'm a root user, if I not, let's see if I try to create a file here, what will happen? Yep, read only file system. So, who asked that? Alex. Alex asked about if uh, we could uh, take away roots power. So, this is one example where even though I'm root and I can't do much about it right now in slash bar. Matthew, are you saying something? I uh, just uh, okay, th th it does this by uh, dropping capabilities. So the kernels root the root things are capabilities um, in defined in Linux. There's a bunch of constants that are like being able to open a network socket, and I forget all. You know, there's a bunch of them, and so it it uh, the various options basically remove those things, and I think it sets up the seccomp filters. Basically, there's a pro a, a part of the kernel also where you can set up uh, basically blocking certain system calls. So you can you could do that in different ways, but what systemd is giving here is basically a pre-thought out and pre-packaged set of those things to actually um, to do a, a specific thing. So um, if it that that's perfect if the specific things match what you want to do. If you want to do something that is for a different use case, you might want to do your own uh, filters or maybe SE Linux or some combination to to do the restriction. Just kind of thinking about the question. Yeah, that, am I right in all that? Correct me if I'm wrong. No, no, correct. And that's where the I would say that the beauty of systemd comes here is that for many of the existing services, we can think about these very basic features which we can enable in systemd. And it's not like you should only enable system D. We should also make sure that AC Linux is up and running on that box in the proper way. So that it's not only system D, we have all those features. And someone may just say, but hey, you are showing us all the features of containers in code. So yes, we are seeing the same kind of features of the Linux kernel, but it's just that system D provide these to be used inside each of the separate services of the box in a very nice way. And if we package that service file along in our RPM package, it will be available to every user of Fedora. And when the system CDL starts a service, the service will automatically get those default security features. So, yeah. And also to note, uh, because my uh, oh, var is still empty, and as Matthew said, that maybe this is not what we want. Maybe we still want to have access to varlib systemd. For example, this is just an example. So we'll try to see. So we'll pass another feed option. And I'll say, give me varlib systemd from the host computer.
so let's try this. Now you can see that we have world lib system D on my service, inside of my service. Everything else, it's still uh, completely empty. Is this good? If anyone can type in anything on the chat, it will be nice for me because then I will know what's like if people can see this. Perfect, thank you. I'll get out. Uh, and because no one answered about like uh, if we want to keep seeing these kind of examples or a service, I'll keep showing this and then we'll move into a service if I hope that is okay. So next feature, I'll keep adding here one by one. Yeah, I hope that's okay. Uh, but before that, let's see one more directory. Last day. Uh, devices. Now, this is also a pretty like nice place for an attacker if somebody gets an access, a cell access to your system that they will try to see what all devices are there, how much of those they can access. So, to make sure that the service can only see the minimal devices and some special ones like dev0, dev null, all of this. Uh, there is a feature called private devices, just like private EMP uh, details. So private uh, devices. That is yes. This is the same command. There you go. So this is within the service. This is what it can see. And this is the actual devices the host root can see. And uh, many of them are API level pseudo devices and then dev0, dev null. Uh, One of the new, completely new device, which new for me, not for Linux or many of you, is slash dev full. I never knew about it till a few months ago, and I will tell you how I found out about uh, this particular device uh, in an experiment related to this system and security features. Uh, is this okay, everyone? And there is a question, Adam. Uh, can you set system level defaults for all services? As I understand, these are all per service options. Uh, system level, if we can do something or not, uh, I don't know. But uh, at the same time, I don't think we can, like, I'm sure system D has some default options. But all these features, depending on what kind of service you're running, it will have to change. So that's why. We have to enable them one by one. Uh, oh, this is the video. This is what happens. I was clicking continuously on the browser and the video to type something which will never work. Uh, then there is One couple of more features which we can talk about. I already talked about kernel, but uh, there is something which I cannot demo at this moment in this uh, VM. But we can even say what kind of file system this service can access. And we can provide, let's say, ext4. Maybe TMPFS. I'll get this. So if you know that there is a network mounted file system and you don't want the service to read those or like you know access those, you can mention it here. 
to Jonathan. So in real, does the X dollar X is your steam system to run with different options? That's something I do not know. If somebody else here who knows this better than me, can you please answer? Anyone else knows this question? I don't think EXCC by default will use a system to run. I think the command is so uh, that's something I don't know. So you have to ask someone who knows better than me on this. Now, instead of going through all of these different features, there are like, and I said, like, uh, protect uh, proc will not work unless you are a different user altogether, etc. Uh, there is one feature which is given again uh, configuration from the system D which will enable multiple of these configurations together and those cannot be turned off like protect home like uh, temporary file system like uh, protect proc all of that automatically which is dynamic user. So when we say that let's have a dynamic user, system D will take care of adding all of these different configurations and will apply to the service. Maybe let's get back and let's try this. I hope this will work. Let's try. Yep. Let's try ID. You can see that it created a new user runtime and a group for this particular service and made sure that the service starts with that user. If we do slash tmp slash word tmp still mp slash let's say if this is not enabled by default, we still have access. So that means we have to make sure that we protect the devices. Uh, while running this service and slash home, it has still has access here. Slash home. What else we can see? So what are the features, by the way? Uh, these are getting automatically enabled when we do dynamic user equal to yes. So as I said, uh, we can do just systemd.exec man page. Here. So this particular section talks about all related to dynamic user and you can read and understand how it creates a dynamic user based on the service name and make sure that next time when you restart the service it gets it tries to give the same exact same dynamic user uh, id so that you know the user the, if any file is created or any kind of access the user or the service had will continue having uh, here are a few things mentioned that remove ipc private tmp they are implied and cannot be turned off and then many other features like implicitly another many other features like restrict suid guid uh, protect home is read only that means you can read other uh, directories uh, what do you call it? other users home directories but you cannot write anything there and then there are many multiple other Paths and directories which can still enable and allow access or not. So, but to see how this dynamic user is still working or what else can we do along with all of this, we should really try to write it in an actual service file and then try this out. Uh, up to command line, I felt like few things are pretty nice to try out in a command line. 
But after that, we should really try to do this in a real service file. So there is a different chat going on about EXCC and system D run. So I'll skip it for now, get back into the workshop details. So to see how this, how good is this? Uh, I did an experiment multiple months ago. I created a project in a language called Rust. It's a web application. And even though it's written in Rust, the code has multiple vulnerabilities. Like you literally have remote code execution, the project also has like arbitrary file rights or like um, you can read literally any file, any directories and you can do directory traversal. So all the nightmare things in a web application. So this project gives us all of that together. Uh, but uh, I wrote it in Rust for another specific reason because I wanted to tell my like a couple of friends uh, that yeah, if you're using a let's say more secure language like Rust but that doesn't mean all of your projects and code will become secure by default. This means that you get all the powers from the language but if we write wrong code our final uh, the application will still be wrong. It will still have all the vulnerabilities we ever can imagine. So to try this out, uh, at first, let me just uh, install Rust here. I will do it live. I'll, I'll use the Rust app, uh, not system uh, Rust in this case, just to make the steps uh, which I wrote down before. Follow my own notes. So this is on a VM in a data center, so this will work fast enough. If any other question, please feel free to ask. We now have access to cargo. And I will also need a GCC in the future, so for the project, so I'll just install. Okay. And you can follow along the project is actually available on my GitHub. It's called Very Bad. The name is given so that people understand that this is not a thing you want to run on a regular system. So what I did uh, for this experiment that I was running very bad, I'm still running very bad um, in a publicly connected VM and asked all of my friends and many other people on the internet to attack it, uh, to see if they can break into the computer. And that's why I like I found like some people tried hours to make sure that they get proper access to the uh, via this application. And uh, I learned about as I was speaking before. I learned about Dev Full because uh, someone tried to read Dev Full and took down the service a couple of times. The service was down and system took care of uh, like you know starting it up again. So then at that moment I could make sure that. Uh, this service is not being able to access dev full. So, but, uh, oh, see, new VM. So Git is not there. Let's install Git. And Git clone. Then I can build the tool as a release, uh, cargo build release. So this will build the very bad application locally. So please make sure do not uh, install or test this out in a internet connected service unless you are really sure. Um, and as Bob said, yes, it's really very bad. Uh, we'll see why part of it. But meanwhile, if you have any questions, 
feel free to ask. I'll wait for one more minute, maybe one or two minutes to make sure the build is done. Any other questions, anyone? Uh, having no questions is sometimes so scary. That means like either everyone is understanding like everything, they can people can understand everything, or no one can understand what I'm speaking about. And because at, at least for a few minutes, Matthew was online, so we, I could see him, his face, and get some feedback, like with voice. Otherwise, like I'm talking to the void. I know you are there, but still. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Bob said, we understand your worries. So. It's almost done. Let's take a stay. Compiling. I tried it, all these commands and things uh, for the workshop yesterday in a small another different VM, but I made a completely fresh VM, complete fresh new federal VM for the workshop so that you can see that I don't have any extra special sauce here in this box running. It's just like step by step what I'm doing. So that you can follow along, and later I'll provide you the write-ups I wrote about on, on this topic, so that you can read, follow, and do the exact same topic, like steps, if you want. Uh, so uh, the Vibber application is actually using the Rocket framework in Rust, uh, which is a web framework, extremely fast, works as it should be, and we are almost there. I think it's compiling and linking the final application binary. Done. It took three minutes instead of one minute. Yay. So if we see target release, this is the executable which we are going to use. So let's uh, unroot correct. So I can cp the file into user as bin and then we'll use it from there and we also have a very bad service file here oh. this is what happens again uh, install right press cloud yeah So I also have a very simple uh, service file, very bare minimal. Uh, the you can see the working directory. We say it's web slash web slash amazing. Uh, I'll uh, for this workshop we'll change it to something else and we'll try to use it. Uh, we can actually keep uh, slash amazing amazing also. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. So as a next step, we should create that uh, the directory called slash web slash yeah. done. Then uh, we'll copy the service file into slash etc system t slash system. D demon reload or system to demon reload correct
what I'm typing. Uh, system serial thing. This is only 9 p.m. I'm still missing all the command. Huh. And uh, by the way, if you can hear some loud music, please let me know. That's my daughter listening to something really strange and pretty loud behind. So I'm sorry for the noise, but. We start the service. Journal CTL hyphen U uh, very bad hyphen F. It started the service. So that's the service is running. We know the service is running. Uh, so let's see what happens uh, with this service. Uh, so this service is running the web application in port 8000. So let's try this out. So this index page, uh, example of poorly written code, we have a few different API. Get OS will give you the details of the OS, get slash file name from the current directory, which is running here, web amazing. It can read a uh, like file and give it to us. We can also execute the date command to find out the date and time on the server, or we can, uh, write to a file. So let's try the get OS. So this is the output. Um, so anyone who is not new to Linux um, uh, systems, they can understand like, wait a second, we know that this is not a standard command output, but instead it's a file from slash etc, correct? So what the application is doing, it's reading the file inside slash etc. And uh, also, if I can go up a little bit, it also says slash file name. If we provide a file name, it will read the file and give us the details. So. Just like any standard uh, pen testing fellow human being or tools, we'll try to pass it some other values. So percentage to f uh, slash that is slash etc, and then again another slash, and maybe shadow file. Let's see if this works. Yes, we can read the shadow file. So this means if this was actually running on an internet connected system, anyone can read the ATC shadow file. I can actually rewrite uh, the file. So so. I will, I'm trying to think if I should try to rewrite or not. Maybe I should not. What is the GitHub link again? So uh, clone. So github.com slash kushaldas, that's my name and the URL. Copy, uh, thank you, Bob. So let's try to write something else, maybe. Uh, I have a... Uh, example file here. Just to showcase that. We have a Fedora account. Yes. Um, so, so instead of etc rewriting etc shadow, I will rewrite some some different file. Just don't want to mess up in the middle of the demo because I already messed it up a couple of times. So let's say I will create a file. Uh, maybe I will call it local shadow. And I have a pre-known uh, root password in this, which is in this case this is the password is actually password. 
And then I can use the same curl command to tell like, hey, rewrite SADO file. So instead of SADO, just for the demo, I'll rewrite, uh, let's say, etc SADO 2. So that would be curl, hyphen data, hyphen binary. And let's read the local SADO file. And then just have to say where to write. So it is a local host colon 8000, that's the port. And the file path. So percentage to F, that is slash, EPC. Then again, percentage to F, it says SADO 2, just for the demo purpose. Done. Okay. So I'm still in the same computer. So now if I do slash etc sado2, I can see there is a file exists now. It's there. And I can even verify it by reading it uh, here. If I still ask the application to go read etc sado2 and give it to me. I'll be terrified to wait. Yep. So we can rewrite our SSH keys, uh, like authorized keys or anything else via this or any application binary if we want. And so next, we'll still see what all things can go wrong. So look, uh, local host 8000 slash exec slash dev. So this API or URL gives us the date and time. And if you see this command, you like, wait a second, this looks like the output of the dead command. So what if we run this? ID command. Look, this application is now running as root on this box. So you can now imagine that you can run literally any command on the system. So I don't know, like tell me any command. Okay. So any command. So the very bad application now has, uh, as I showed you already, like some literally the nightmare is vulnerabilities on this application running and it's running as root. We have all the access whichever way we want on this box. So our job is to uh, protect this service but using things we saw before, using systemd only, nothing else. So, it is in systemd slash system slash very bad dot service. And you can write it anywhere, I'll start with here. So you remember the, all the different features or options we talked about, we can write them on here one by one. So multiple options together, multiple configuration values together. So to start with, we'll just protect the temporary directories and protect these two. So this means now, even though service is running as root, it will not be able to you know do things much on other people's users, let's say, dot ssh directory or authorized keys files in those so. So let's take them and reload and maybe we we'll go to a curl command with reading files so instead of this ss less on Okay, slash home is a directory. So instead, uh, so here we can maybe say, what do you say, ls? Maybe ls and then space is percentage 20 and percentage 2f home. Still has Fedora. And again, percentage to F and B. Oh, yeah, maybe I did not restart. A. Ah. Thank you. Now 
Leute, thanks a lot. So this is, uh, I think I'm actually doing this third time, this uh, previous two times I gave it as talks instead of workshops and this is third time and every time I forgot to restart the service. So now I have to make a different mental note or a post-it note somewhere on the top of my screen saying remember to restart the service. But yeah, as we can see slash home is now empty because protect home. And at least this is the one best thing about having workshops kind of scenario where you all are can giving me feedback and tell me that what I missed because first time when I gave the talk I was literally having no clue why things are not running and nobody told me from the audience and it was a real physical workshop uh, talk a couple of months ago. So we enabled uh, or we can see that there's nothing in the home saying goes PMP because we said uh, private PMP yes, the PMP is also empty and you can try out different things. And uh, we know we have access to slash web uh, percentage to F and then amazing. Nothing. So if I do then if I keep the same path now percentage to f txt. Okay, so my slash web of amazing now has a file which we wrote. So we just try to make sure that this dynamic uh, or this directory where the system service is running or it should like uh, the logs directory, the cache directory, the, all of these different directories, we should we try to make sure that these directories are also like you know private to the service itself. Uh, And along with all of those services, uh, we first move into dynamic user. Yes. So this time I remember demon reload and then restart the service. So now if we you know now if we do exec slash id. Now we can see the service is not anymore running as root. It's automatically chosen a service UID based on the name of the service and it's running there. So now, and it also like no SUID, GUID uh, calls, etc. So this means we cannot just now arbitrarily execute the things which uh, like uh, executable switch where root can cause trouble. And if we go back again, we can also say that, hey, I want the working directory to be a different one. Um, let's say, normally very bad. Here. And I also want to say that this directory will be there between restarts. So we can say that, hey, this holds the state of the service. So state state directory, that's the name of the directory. That's really bad. Demon reload and then restart the application. What should we try here? I'm just looking to my notes, like commands to try, etc. Uh, maybe some other commands. 
The bait is the only command which I really want our users to execute, nothing else. So let's try if we have still have access to something else. Um, okay, no output. Uh, this is mostly because uh, my application doesn't throw the error message back to the user. So maybe I'll try. Maybe percentage to zero, that is space, percentage to F. And John is asking in between if system did an C function. Means uh, system is written in C. So if you're asking me that. And I think you found the actual function call. So I don't know how system D works inside. So I, need, I know it's written in C. So I'm sure there must be a function which is being used inside. And for anything else, you have to talk to the system D developers and ask them for more details. Can I still do RM of a file? Percentage to F, let's say the shadow two, the file we created. There's nothing, so let's try. Uh, not deleted. Can anyone tell us why? No access. Correct. Because if we instead of RM, if we do this class etc. If we try to see what is there in slash etc. Here, it has access to slash etc directory, but uh, how to see the percentage maybe hyphen L, hyphen allowed, yes. So percentage uh, space hyphen L and then another space then slash etc, this. It still says that uh, we have access to the file, but as read only. And because it's root, correct. So our service is running right now as very bad. So it cannot delete that file. But it can still read whole of slash etc which may be not the thing that we want. So how to do that? Now, if we know uh, most of the applications, maybe we will not need it, but if we know that our application needs to execute some other commands, some other executables within the systems, we can find out those like the libraries, the shared libraries it depends on and that particular executable and then say only allow this to run. So to do that, and do I have a LED? Yeah, I have a LED. We, sorry, uh, we want to know what all libraries uh, the date command is dependent on so that we can only allow those libraries to be loaded as executable on memory and the date command. Everything else will not allow them to load. So LDD user being dead. So three links here. And because we stop everything else to be like accessed or allowed, this also means we have to make sure that we can still access to the system D itself and the very bad application because the application needs to load like make sure that it can access to the executable uh, memory portion for that so we'll do user is been very bad a few more uh, libraries and i already note them noted them down so we can say him the service and now two configurations. First of all, we say that no exe paths. 
with this value we can say that this service will not be allowed to execute anything under this path and i will say slash that is this executable is not allowed to do any executable under slash root everything we close down everything and then only enable the things which we know we need via exec paths another so i'll just copy paste because it's long so you can see it's all the uh, libraries and the executables so that they can be mapped into memory to for execution so this will change if you know what all things you want to execute allow to execute from the service and what all things you want to you know don't allow colon x mn reload and restart yeah, i did not forget restart this time i'll still try uh, yes this is dead dead command works what about id boom that service actually crashed uh, it's not the service crashed it's actually the service uh, the code which i wrote it found a oh it cannot execute this command so it throws a error 500 page and uh, this is the default error 500 page of rocket so that's what we can see so now if you want to try any other command on the system same error it can only talk about system d it can only talk about the service file but this also means it still has allow it still can access to multiple other files and directories etc let's say someone can try to read uh, dev zero dev uh, full like those so we have to make sure that those devices cannot also be accessed and uh, let's say any other files uh, let me see if the files i wrote here yeah so if you remember that uh, slash tmp like temporary file system and oh it can also read uh, this file let's say not exec slow percentage uh, 2f etc percentage to f let's say uh, not os release because we need to read it let's try some other file can we read password no because uh, it's not running as root anymore uh, but maybe it will try to read any other file it has access maybe the service file itself so systemd uh, no sorry slash etc slash systemd slash system slash very bad dot service so if i'm an attacker i can still read this particular file correct and we should try to see how much we can block here so in and you can actually say that slash etc becomes i wrote slash etc password okay i should try not to do workshops or any talks after 8 pm that means uh, this also shows i'm getting old and at only 9 pm i'm typing multiple typos uh, but this also i'm a human being not being able to type properly at night i have coffee i don't want to drink it at nine at this moment anyway thank you for pointing the actual typing errors uh, for now i'll go back here i'm saying that let's make slash etc as a temporary file system but because we are still executing the dead command and also reading the os release file we should be able to read those two files from the host so I will copy paste those two files. So bind read only paths, etc OS release and etc local time. Then reload and then restart the service. So now 
control R, okay, OS. So we can still read etc uh, OS release. We can still do exec dead because uh, it is a local time file. We need to read that. But uh, if I to read any other file, let's say percentage to F. Now it fails. Yeah, like because if okay to, to see why this is happening, first we have to disable. I will remove the exec command so that we can see nicely what's going on. I want to just make sure that I can do a less command. So here, because we are now mounting, mounting slash etc into this service as a temporary file system and then saying, give us only these two file access. So we can see that the service cannot see any other files under slash etc. Uh, and we can also say particular paths which can be blocked. Uh, let's say uh, they full dev zero, as I said, because I found that that's a nice way to. You cannot, you will not be able to do a remote code execution, but you may be able to take down the whole service, and the service has to restart. And as I was speaking, like how I learned about this is that I am right now running a service at very bad dot kushaldas dot in at four eight thousand. So you can see that this is running with all like all the different features I found inside system D which can help us to and that's a fast bike I guess outside. Um, sorry. Um, it's running facing internet. Uh, this is the service which I made uh, available to everyone else to attack. A few people managed to read random files under slash dev and crash the application. That's the system D, uh, system D service, but the service restarted itself. And I learned a lot about how people think while attacking uh, similar services. So if you want, you can actually right now try and see if you can uh, you know, go ahead and attack this service. It's running over from, I think, March, April, April or May. I don't remember which month, but it's running pretty good. Like nobody managed to get a sale itself. Um, right now, and as Adam said that we could just have it mount its own config directory. Yes, uh, this one doesn't have any much uh, configuration. So it's totally depending on what you need to do. And that's why it doesn't have, like system doesn't provide all of these features automatically to every service on the system. We need per service, we have to figure out as users or developers or contributors to the uh, project, what all things, what all security features we should enable or disable here. And please remember that this is not the end. System D is just making it super easy for all of us to have these features. But we should also make sure that we are running SLNX, we are making sure all the other basic things, like the kind of in quotes mistakes I did in my code, which allows me to do all of these uh, scary things on a service. So if any one of you actually planning to you know, execute things on that against that service, feel free to, if you can actually get an access to the sale or something, if you can ping me and see if you can send some nice things. So why exactly do you have system in the EXCC path? Uh, honest answer, I found the service will not start up if I do not have system in the EXCC path. Uh, a little bit more detailed answer. When I found this uh, and when I started writing this service and you know running it on the network, I was uh, on the internet. I started talking with Leonard, making sure he knows what all things I'm finding. And at that moment, Leila told me that in a future release of System D, we'll not have to put System D in the EXCC path. That's what I remember. But I have to ask him once again if it's already in the last release uh, after Fedora 35. 
in Fedora 36. If I need it or not, I have to double check. I don't remember right now. But uh, I mean, he knew why exactly that issue was there and how to fix it. So and that's why. And um, can I do a list? No, I can't. Yeah, this thing is running right now, but it is running with all those uh, security features enabled. So I cannot run a list here right now and see what all files are there. And I don't want to, like I'm sure like there are multiple people try to write various uh, files in the state directory and don't want to try to read them because there might be any kind of exploits inside or like bad text, which I don't want to put it in the recording here. But um, there is nothing much to show. I hope that there will be more people trying out this with us uh, today. And I learned a lot during this. And one of the major things is that I should not do talks after 8 p.m. like this because there was multiple failures in the typing, including forgetting system CTL, demon reload. Uh, but um, I will be here for the rest of the conference, maybe a couple of hours today also and tomorrow and day after. I hope it's a three-day conference. And uh, I'm available on IRC all the time. My nickname on IRC is Kushal. Uh, I'm on Twitter or multiple other places. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. And like, if you know how we, what can I do more to make it better, like, you know, protect it better, feel free to help me to learn those things. I hope this will be useful for all of you. And I try to write regularly in my blog, which is uh, kushandas.in. And uh, that's my blog. And I actually blogged about this particular experiment in my blog, if you go back a couple of months back. And I, like, I also talked about how people found some issues and I fixed them one by one and restarted the service. So thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I'll wait for a minute if you have any questions or anything or else uh, I can stop sharing and get out of the room. And I don't know how to stop recording. That's a different question. I never started the recording. Uh, okay, I guess no questions. Thank you once again. I'll stop the sharing and then get out of the room. Thank you.